Lesson 8.5 Word Problem Solving Comparison Problems with Fractions. We can use the strategy Draw a Diagram to solve comparison problems that involve fractions by drawing bar models. We can use a bar model to show how many times more one amount is than the fraction amount. Then we can use the model to write a multiplication equation to solve the problem. A puppy weighs three pounds. Its mother weighs eight times more than the puppy. How much does the mother dog weigh? Well, the puppy weighs three pounds. The mother weighs eight times more. We do three times eight, which is equal to 24 pounds. We know the mother dog weighs 24 pounds. Sophia's school is one and a half miles from her home. And the distance to her grandmother's house is four times that far. How far does Sophia live from her grandmother? So we need to find four times the distance of one and a half miles, or one and a half four times. We use a bar model, and we show the school is one box, one and a half, and the grandmother is four times that, so we have four boxes for four times. And do you see this M? We're going to let M equal the distance to her grandmother's house in miles. Miles starts with M, see? We're comparing the school's distance to her grandmother's distance in miles. We can write an equation that equals M for miles. M is equal to four times one and a half. And to multiply a whole number by a mixed number, we rename the mixed number as a fraction greater than 1. We do 1 times the denominator 2 plus the numerator 1. That's going to give us 3 halves. We learned how to do this in the last few videos. Now we multiply 4 times 3 halves by multiplying the 4 to the numerator 3. We write it over that denominator 2. We get 12 halves. And then we use division to write the answer in simplest form. 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6. We know m is equal to 6 miles. We know Sophia lives 6 miles from her grandmother. And we also know the answer makes sense and is reasonable because this 6 is greater than this factor 4, the whole number. We also learned that when we multiply a number by a mixed number, the product will be greater than the whole number. We've also learned before that a variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount. We often use the first letter of the item we're trying to find. So we'll use an M for miles, or a G for gallons, or F for feet, or an N for number. We might also see a P, or a Q, or an R. We might also see an X. In 2007, Mr. Lee planted an apple tree that was six and two-thirds feet tall. In 2019, it grew to be three times that height. How tall was the apple tree in 2019? So we think we need to find three times six and two-thirds, or six and two-thirds three times. We use a bar model to show that it was six and two-thirds feet in 2007, and we use three boxes in our bar model for three times for 2019. And these three boxes are going to equal the height in feet in 2019. And we're comparing the tree's height in 2007 to its height in 2019. We can write an equation that equals h, the height in feet. h is equal to three times six and two thirds. To multiply these, we rename the 6 and 2 thirds as a fraction greater than 1. We do 6 times the denominator 3, that's 18. We add the 2 numerator and we get 20. We write it over that 3 denominator, we have 20 thirds. And 3 times 20 thirds is 3 times 20. This 3 times the numerator over that 3 denominator, we get 60 thirds. We use division to write the fraction in simplest form. We think 60 divided by 3 is equal to 20. It's 20 feet tall in 2019. 
And there are several ways to show multiplication in an equation. We've been using this big X for 3 times 4. Well, sometimes that letter, a letter X is used as a variable to take the place as an unknown amount. This big X means multiply. If you see the X written like this, it's a variable. It's taking the place of an unknown amount. And using a dot in between the two numbers can help us avoid confusing them. Some people use a dot. My granddaughter does. Parentheses also show multiplication. You're going to use this in algebra. The number will be right up next to the parentheses. You won't see an operation sign in between them. That means we're multiplying 3 times 4. So variables are usually written in what's called italics. It almost looks a little bit script or slanted. So you know if it's a really big X like this, it means multiply. The average weight of a 12-week-old kitten is 3 pounds. The average weight of an adult female cat is 3 and one-third times that weight. The average adult male cat is 4 and one-third times the weight of a 12-week-old kitten. What is the average weight for an adult female cat? And what is the average weight for an adult male cat? So we need two different answers. The average weight for the adult female and the average weight for the adult, adult male. We need to identify the important information. It's not important that the kitten is 12 weeks old, so that number 12 is not going to help us. But it is important that the kitten is 3 pounds. It's also important that the adult female cat is 3 and one third times this 3 pounds. And it's important that the average adult male cat is 4 and one third times times that 3 pounds. So we're going to have two different answers. 3 and 1 third times 3 pounds and 4 and 1 third times 3 pounds. That's two different equations. We're comparing the adult cat's weights to the kitten's weight. We solved the first equation for the adult female cat. We're going to do 3 times 3 and 1 third. We're going to write this mixed number as a fraction greater than 1, we do 3 times 3 plus 1. That gives us a 10 thirds. We multiply the whole number to the numerator. We have 3 times 10 over that 3 denominator. That's 30 thirds. We use division to simplify this, to put it in simplest form. That's 30 divided by 3 is equal to 10. So we know the average adult female cat is 10 pounds. Now we do it for the adult male cat. We have 3 times 4 and 1 third. We put this mixed number into a fraction greater than 1. We do the 4 times 3 denominator, which is 12. We add the numerator. That's 13. We use the same denominator. We have 13 thirds. We multiply the whole number to the numerator. 3 times 13. That's equal to 39. We use the same denominator. We have 39 thirds. We write this in simplest form. By doing division, 39 divided by 3 is equal to 13. So we know the average adult male cat is 13 pounds. A bird's wingspan is the total length from one outstretched wingtip to the other all the way across its body. That's its wingspan. We have a table here showing birds of prey wingspans. We have a falcon, a goshawk, a buzzard and an eagle, and it's showing that a falcon's wingspan can be up to four and one-fifth feet. And a goshawk can have a wingspan up to four and one-fifth feet, just like the falcon. And the buzzard is up to four and one-half feet, so it could be less. That's just how far it can go up to, usually. And then the eagle goes up to seven and a half feet. It's telling us to use mental math to decide if an eagle's wingspan can be up to two times the wingspan of a buzzard according to this table. So we need to do two times four and a half. Two times four is eight. Then we have to do two times a half. That's one whole, we have two halves. That's a nine foot wingspan. 
And we can use mental math doing this. We multiply the 2 to the 4, we get an 8. Then we multiply the 2 to the half, and we get one whole. So a buzzard's wingspan times 2 would be up to 9 feet. Oh, that's too big. That's too great. This is only 7.5 feet. So the answer is no. An eagle's wingspan can only be up to 7.5 feet, according to this chart. It can't be two times that of a buzzard. Now let's do some higher order thinking skills. We know that fractions with the same numerator and denominator are equal to one, one whole. Well, when we multiply a fraction or mixed number by a whole number that is the same as the denominator, the product will be a whole number. When we multiply a fraction or mixed number by a whole number that's the same as the denominator, see we have a 2 and the denominator is a 2, then we know the product's going to be a whole number. Let's see how this worked. We would do 2 times 4, that's 8. Then we would do 2 times this half. Well, that's 2 halves. We have an 8 plus 1, that's equal to 9. And this numerator 2 is a multiple of this denominator 2, so it divides evenly. We have a whole number. Let's try that again. Now we have 3 times 5 and 2 thirds. Look, we have a 3 here and a 3 here. We know the answer is going to be a whole number because that's a 3, and in the mixed number, the denominator is a 3. We start by doing the 3 times 5. That's 15. Then we do 3 times the 2 thirds. We multiply the 3 to the numerator 2. That's 6 thirds. And 6 divided by 3 is 2. It's like a 3 thirds plus 3 thirds. That's equal to 2. And this numerator 6 is a multiple of that denominator 3, so we know it divides evenly. Our answer is 15 plus 2. It's 17. We have a whole number. Now look, we have a 4 here, and we have a denominator 4 here. We have 4 times 2 and 3 fourths. And because that's a 4 in the whole number, and that's a 4 in the denominator, we know our answer is going to be a whole number. The product will be a whole number. We do the 4 times 2 first. That's going to give us an 8. Then we do 4 times 3 fourths. We multiply the 4 to the 3 numerator. We get 12 fourths. We divide, to put this in simplest form, 12 divided by 4 is a 3. So we're adding 8 plus 3. And that's 11. We have a whole number. This 12 numerator is a multiple of this 4 denominator, so we know it divides evenly. Try it again. We have a 5 here and a 5 in the denominator of the mixed number. We know this is going to equal a whole number. We do the 5 times 3, which is 15. Then we do the 5 times 2 fifths. We multiply the 5 to the 2 numerator and get a 10. That's 10 fifths. And we divide this to put it in simplest form. 10 divided by 5, that's a 2. We have 15 plus 2, that's a 17. This 10 numerator is a multiple of that 5 denominator, and it divides evenly. So when this whole number is the same as the denominator of the fraction or mixed number, we know our answer is going to be a whole number. So will the product be a whole number or a mixed number? We need to circle the correct answer, whole number or mixed number. Here we've got 4 times 2 and 3 fifths. Now look at this 4 and look at the denominator in the mixed number. We think when we get to the part where we're multiplying the 4 times the 3 fifths, we're going to multiply the 4 to the numerator 3 and get a 12. That's going to give us 12 fifths. And is 12 a multiple of 5? Will it divide evenly? No, it won't. So we're not going to have a whole number. This 4 is not the same as the denominator here. So we're going to have a mixed number for our product. Now look at this one. Is the product going to be a whole number or mixed number? We have 3 times 1 and 2 thirds. We see we have a 3 here and a 3 in the denominator. 
And we think when we get to the part where we're multiplying the 3 to the 2 thirds, we're going to multiply the 3 to the numerator 2 and get a 6 thirds. Is 6 a multiple of 3? Yes, it is. Will it divide evenly? Yes. Because this is a 3 and that denominator is a 3, we know our answer is going to be a whole number. And knowing how this works will help you check your answers quickly. If you see that this is a 3 and that's a 3 and your product is a mixed number, you know you made a math error and you need to go back and check your work. This is the last lesson for chapter 8 for multiplying fractions by whole numbers. We're going to move on to chapter 9 now and we're going to talk about how fractions and decimals are related. And I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you there. Bye.